Hey guys, this is Sports with Dylan. Bruce Boudreaux has finally been fired as the Canucks head coach. It felt inevitable. Everyone knew he was going to be fired. He knew he was going to be fired. In fact, I am surprised he was not fired earlier. In my opinion, this is just bad management. Like I said, every single person on the planet, the players knew, the coach knew, the audience, the fans last night all knew, everyone knew Bruce Boudreaux was going to be fired. And yet they dragged out the saga for so long. I'm getting a no notification as I speak right now that Jim Rutherford, the president of the Canucks, apologized for the Bruce Boudreaux saga. And he should. He should apologize to Bruce because everyone knew he's going to be fired. He said goodbye last night because after this terrible stretch of the Canucks, after their loss to the Oilers, everyone knew that was going to be the end. Replacing Boudreau is Rich Trochet. This will be interesting to see what the Canucks can do because sometimes all a team needs is a new coach, a new voice in the locker room. Sometimes that's what gets them energized. That happened a couple seasons ago when Boudreaux replaced Travis Green as the Canucks head coach. So we will have to see. It's possible that the Canucks just can't pull it together. They are far behind. They have a way better roster than this, but they are far behind in the division. And it will be a tough beat to make the playoffs. But maybe they can pull it together. Maybe, though, they can't. And maybe they should just ship out some of their players. Now, we've obviously all heard the Bo Horvat rumors, but I would actually keep Bo Horvat for the most part if I were the Canucks. He's only 27 and he's your captain. He's a good leader in the locker room and he's been a really good player. If the Canucks think that they just need to retool and in a season or two, then they will be back in the playoffs. I would keep Bo Horvat. The problem is, though, he is a free agent, so it's kind of his choice if he wants to return or not. But if they can get him to an extension, that's what I would do. Unless the Canucks think this will take five or six seasons, in which case it's not worth it. Trade away Bo Horvat, but there's plenty of other players I would trade away as well, such as Thatcher Demko. He's the same age as Horvat, and if you're taking six seasons, then you're getting up there in age. Now, Thatcher Demko is a solid goalie for the most part, although he has been inconsistent this season and he has been injured for quite a bit of it as well. Now, I would attribute most of that to the defense, and I believe there would be a couple takers, such as the Kings or Kraken for Thatcher Demko, but it's tough to say. Maybe teams would be still a bit hesitant to take on all of Thatcher Demko's contract when you really don't know what he's going to do. Another guy that I would trade, who is in millions of rumors a year ago, would be JT Miller. Whenever I look at the NHL news, all I see is rumors about Bo Horvat. Can you not think of anyone else reporters? I mean, seriously, their job is to report on things, but they can't find any variety. It's just more Bo Horvat rumors. And a year ago, it was JT Miller rumors. That's why I'm not talking about Bo Horvat too much in this video, because I am tired of seeing things about him. I wouldn't want to listen to myself talk about Bo Horvat. But J.T. Miller's more interesting of a case because J.T. Miller would be a free agent, although he was signed to a contract extension a couple months ago, which means that he is no longer set to be a free agent this coming off season, which means that the Canucks would be easier to keep him. But he's two years older than Horvat and has been less productive than Horvat this season. So maybe it would make sense to trade away JT Miller over Horvat. If someone's willing to take on the contract, which I think they would, it's not that bad of a contract, it's stretched out over time, and JT Miller is quite a solid player, then I would honestly ship out JT Miller before I chip out Horvat. Because JT Miller is not your captain, but Horvat is. And JT Miller is not as productive, JT Miller's older. So... It makes more sense all around to sign Horvat to an extension and trade away JT Miller so that you have enough cap space to sign Horvat to that extension. Another guy who's popped up in a couple of trade rumors is Andre Kuzmenko. 
He came over from the KHL this season, and he has been amazing. It's remarkable, actually. Most KHL forwards do not work out in the NHL. KHL, by the way, is the Russian Hockey League. But Andrei Kuzmenko has just been a superstar this season. Obviously, he's not quite up there with Bo Horvat, JT Miller, Elias Pettersson, but he is pretty darn close. But he, too, is a free agent this offseason, despite being only 26. If the Canucks don't think they can re-sign him, it's the same thing as Horvath. Maybe you want to trade him. Although they might have less takers because Kuzmenko isn't quite up there as Horvath. But Kuzmenko would cost less. So for a team, say, the Flames, that might want a Ford but don't have enough cap space to go all in for Bo Horvath, then Andre Kuzmenko could really make sense. The last guy I'm going to talk about is Brock Besser. He is young and under contract for quite a while longer. So by the looks of it, then he would be great to stay with the Canucks and stick with Elias Pettersson for more years while they go through the rebuild. But he just has not had it this year. And I think he would benefit from a change of scenery, working with some other guys. Maybe that was just Boudreaux's coaching. Maybe he will play a lot better under Rick Trashet, the replacement for Bruce Boudreaux. But I can't say that. I'm 100% sure that will happen. It might just work out that you would want to trade him. Sadly for the Canucks, the guys they most need to trade, which are their defensemen that are way overpaid and getting up there in age, Tyler Myers and Oliver Ekman Larson mostly, will not be traded because no one is going to take on those contracts. Not one team, maybe the Coyotes if they're getting quite a bit, although it would be kind of ironic taking Oliver Ekman Larson back. So then the Canucks would end up having to trade at least a first round pick, maybe more, just so that the Coyotes are willing to trade on Oliver Ekman Larson's contract. So that wouldn't really make sense. If they aren't going to be competitive, it makes sense just to stick with these contracts. They might weigh you down a bit, but then you can at least keep your high picks and go and draft some good players in the draft this year. But who knows, maybe the Canucks can actually turn it around. They have a tough route to do that, but it's entirely possible that they are able to. They have a high-powered offense, and the defense could perform better. They have the talent. They just need to put it all together. So I think it is still a possibility that the Canucks can pull it together and actually make the playoffs, despite the division being very competitive this year. But for now, thanks for watching.